Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So I already drywall tape our son of a grave digger body. We're gonna shoe goo it and do the rest of it today. So watch the rest of this video. All right, here we go. Hey gang, so welcome back uh, to the video. And again, we're gonna do a video of me just showing you how I kind of reinforce the bodies of my RCs. Um, I'll show you the, uh, some examples of some of the RC bodies that I've done so far. And um, as you'll see in the, um, the rest of this video, I do two methods. Um, basically, the first is just using drywall tape and shugu. And the other is um, using screen mesh uh, that you see typically in like an aluminum doors and aluminum screens. And again, shugu. Now, you can use whatever kind of material that's best suited for you. Uh, for me, I use shugu because it's readily available. I know you can use something like E6000, which is similar to Shugu, but I can get Shugu at my Walmart for like under $6. They run about uh, $5.75 for me. And drywall tape, um, I got at my local hardware shop. Um, I've got two rolls that I bought brand new, and with all the bodies that I've done with um, drywall tape, I'm still on my first roll. So um, drywall tape comes in different colors. You can get them in black, orange, white, and I've been using white. I might try black the next time. Uh, only because when I have found out when I use the Shugu, um, it's just easier to see which areas I have covered and which areas I have not. Okay, so just here's just some of the bodies that I've already done um, with Shugu. Uh, the first is my um, Traxxas, Traxxas Max. Now this method, if you look here, I'm going to keep the camera straight there. This method I've used here, I use screen mesh. Now, I've learned about screen mesh on uh, Facebook forums, and this is one solid piece. So instead of cutting up strips, long rectangular strips, I just use one whole long piece. And then I just made like relief cuts in areas that just needed um, some finessing in the curves. And this turned out okay. This is the first body that I've ever done. So if you look at it, there is some comping of the shoe goo like this. And it's typically something like, um, like if you ever use rubber cement or rubber glue, uh, when it dries up and, it, you know, as you rub it on or rub your fingers together or rub it on any, any material, it kind of clumps like this. So I ran into that, that kind of problem on this. And I just found out... Um, through experience that it's best to use a lot of thin layers so I, when I try to do this I just try to get as much coverage as I could and um, I also had my fan running so with the fan on and putting thick coats initial coats I think the shoe goo dried too quickly so that's when I ran into these problems with the clumping okay now the second one I had done was this one here I will skip over this uh, grave digger. The second one that I done was the Haas. So with the Haas, I just used regular drywall tape. I did not use uh, screen mesh, and I used thinner layers. And here, as you can see, there's hardly any clumping at all. So technique got a little bit better, and I just learned through doing it that thin layers is the way to go, and. Try to do it in, a, in an area where you don't have a fan on or it's too cold because that'll just set off the shoe goo to, uh, a little bit quicker than you might want to. So use thin layers and just build up on it. Okay? So that's that. Now the one I just uh, recently finished are these two. Uh, if you look at here, this again is um, screen mesh. Um, has a little bit more time to dry I think um, it's still kind of it's partial I think it has like another 10 20 percent more drying to go but this is the grave digger body if you've seen my uh, grave digger bash um, I gave you an update on that this is again screen mesh and now this way uh, when I did this one I did cut it into strips to see if it was a little bit easier to, to apply and I use a uh, hot glue on this to keep it in place or to keep the screen mesh in place and that seems a little bit easier than doing the one piece 
Although I think the one piece actually looks a lot cleaner because all you see is one single um, piece of material, which is the mesh. Usually when you do um, screen mesh or like on doing dry, uh, drywall tape, you do want to overlap it just a little so that you make sure you get strength in the areas and you kind of make sure that you cover everything. Now this looks a little bit clumpier because I think it still needs some time to dry. And then also on my lights, I did use Tessa tape. So Tessa tape, you know, I already explained in a previous video and I explain it later again in this video. Okay, that's that. And lastly, this is the one I just kind of, um, I've done um, not too long ago. So it's basically my, um, my custom F100 body, the wide fenders. And this is what I'm currently using on the, uh, the grave digger right now. Okay. And again, I use drywall tape and thin layers of chugu, as well as hot glue just to keep the, the mesh or the drywall tape in place. So you can see there, the hot glue. And then that really did help uh, keep the areas in place, especially when you get into areas that are intricate or it has a lot of curves. Putting hot glue will help keep that in place because even though drywall tape does have a sticky back, to keep it in place, uh, hot glue will keep it in there. So when it comes time to apply your um, shugu, um, it won't come apart from the body. So I'll drywall tape it, I'll hot glue the areas that I want it to stick, I'll let all the hot glue dry, and then I'll start applying my thin layers of shugu. Okay. So this is the last one that I've done. So today we're going to do the son of a grave digger. I'm going to use um, drywall tape again and um, hot glue and shugu. So hey gang, so welcome back. So I wanted to do this video just to show you how I reinforce the body on my RCs. As you can see, this is the son of the grave digger body. Um, I've already dried wall taped using of course this kind of drywall tape and I'm, I'm gonna use uh, shugu to reinforce it or just to make sure that the drywall tape hardens and it uh, gets really good adhesion. Now you can use different uh, materials. I know some of you have been using things like uh, E6000 which is similar to shugu but I buy shugu because it's uh, readily available for me. I always pick this up at Walmart and they run about f under six dollars, five dollars and seventy some odd cents, five seventy six around there. Um, I found that E6000 is about the same cost where I live, so I just buy Shugu. Some people have been using um, uh, Flex Spray or Flex Seal as an undercoating. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but I'm really happy with uh, drywall tape. Um, you can also use, and I've used this in the past, um, screen mesh. So this is screen mesh, and this is the kind of material that comes on screen doors, um, sliding doors. And I found this to work really, really well. Um, the only thing is it's a little bit harder to manipulate because it is um, a little heavier compared to drywall tape. So I find that um, I've used two methods. Uh, first method was to use one whole solid piece. And the other method is similar to drywall tape is basically use strips and putting it on. But in both cases, it helps to use um, hot glue. So if you have a hot gun, uh, plan on using a lot of uh, glue sticks and this will help keep the uh, material in place until it dries and you're ready to uh, shoe glue it. Um, so this is the body that I have. Um, a lot of people have been complaining about the decal. So if you look at this right now, um, the decal and what most people are complaining about is this grayish look to it or this haze on the decal. And that's basically because of the printing process of the decal. Um, if you look at the color of the, um, the body itself, um, basically the black is like a true black. So it's re really vibrant and then the blue flames is really vibrant. But when they put the sticker on, it kind of has that um, opaque look or kind of a dull look to it, a different kind of sheen. So I've heard there is like a, an updated uh, decal 
that's coming on the new grave diggers or the new LMTs, but um, I have yet to see that. Um, so I know on Facebook, there is a page that you can go to. So it's basically like an LMT Facebook page. And there is a seller there. Um, if you watch my last video on the grave digger bash, he basically did, um, he basically did um, a sell of decals. You can either get the son of the grave digger decals, which I have here. Now, if you look at it, his printing process is a lot better. So as you can see, it's you know true color. It focuses in on here. There. So the black is very black, and the other colors really do pop. So I'm gonna save these decals until later. Um, you know, after I do some bashing and this gets all scratched up, then I'll apply the new decals as needed. So that's that, so. And they, they run about uh, 35 to $40, depending on which one you get, whether it's the Son of the Grave Digger or the Grave Digger decal. I think the Son of the Grave Digger is $5 more. Um, I basically got it for like uh, $40 shipped to me in Hawaii. So that's that. So let me just show you what I've been doing. Um, in my last video, if you've seen it, the uh, LMT bash, I showed you the body that I already have on the Grave Digger. I changed it out to a Proline body, and I've already done the uh, um, the screen mesh, not the screen mesh, but the uh, drywall tape on that. Um, so I'm going to drywall tape this in the same manner. As you can see, I used drywall tape already, and I used shoe glue to... Uh, not sugar, but um, hot glue to hold the pieces in place. So it's basically ready for me to add thin layers of sugar. And, and then also, if you watch my video too, I'm using Tessa tape, which is sort of like a cloth material. Um, auto stereo um, installers use this to tidy up the wires behind the dash. Um, new car manufacturers also use this to tidy up wires. And it just makes the, the wire look a lot better. Instead of seeing exposed wire, I'm using it as well to not only protect it but to make everything nice and tidy just a notification there. but um once i finish shoe going it then i'll just um put it back on and back into its place another reason why i'm using tessa tape is because um one of the other channels on youtube was stating that because the uh the lateral frames uh, does come in contact with the body um he noticed that i'm bashing Every time the body was actually hitting the front nose of the chassis, it was actually pinching the, the wire. So eventually his wire to the headlights had actually um, been severed or cut. So this will help actually protect that too. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'll just basically show you what I, what I do to it and how I kind of start on using Shugu. Um, basically I've learned it's it helps to to add a lot of thin layers and build up on it because my first attempt of doing shugu um, basically had a lot of clumps and what I mean by clumps is that um, it looks like how if you would use rubber glue would have all these little um, round um, buildups of shugu so um, I'm just gonna use thin layers like this and then just smear it on just like that so that's how I start off and then I'll just go section at a time and continue to do this. So just like that. Until we build up a nice layer of shugu. Now, um, being in Hawaii, it is kind of uh, humid without the trade wind. So I've noticed that when I do use something like a fan, um, it does not help me with the shugu process. I've noticed that when I have the fan on, or maybe if you have like an EC unit, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> got a drink of water there. Sorry, <laughs> but I notice like when it when it gets cold or when it cools down or starts to um, um, act fast, that's when I get problems again with clumping. So. I've since no longer used a fan when I'm doing my shugu process. Okay? So let me just kind of do like one section and then I'll show you the difference and how I can tell the areas that I've done. Now, I'll, when I use my drywall tape, I do use 
or I do overlap sections. And that's shown not only to um, reinforce the adhesion of the drywall tape to the body, but it makes it look a lot um, cleaner and more uniform when you look at the drywall tape. So that's a reason why I do it. So I'm just doing the side sections here. I'll just do one whole side and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just using, you know, like small dabs of drywall tape. I'm um, sorry, sorry, um, of shoe glue and kind of spreading it as even as I can over the sections that I'm doing. Now you really want to get into areas that are curved, like here, um, areas that are hard to reach. So that you know that the shoe get shoe, do, shoe glue gets into those areas. Okay, I'm almost done here. And then for me, I'll do like at least two coats. And if if needed, I'll do like a third. So I've done a few bodies. Um, none of them have cracked or. Um, been broken since then. Um, I think this Grape Digger body is one of the thinnest bodies that I've noticed out of the box compared to the others. And the areas that I found is on the original Grape Digger, it's the front nose or the hood. And for both models, it's the um, it's the rear section here. These parts really do flex, if you can see that. Very flexible in the rear. So. Mm -hmm. The other bodies that I've done so far have been the Traxxas Max, um, my Traxxas Haas, um, and as you know, the, uh, the original Grave Digger. Okay, so I'm almost done here. I'll just show you what I've done so far. Just a few more areas I want to do. Okay, so let me just close this up so it doesn't dry out. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this or the camera will pick this up, but so if you can look here, this is the area that has not been drywall taped. Uh, not not been shoe good, sorry. So you can tell that the color is you know black on the background and it's still kind of dry looking, of course, because has nothing's been applied. And this is the part that I've done already. So I'm not sure if that's picking up in the camera, but I can tell the difference. Uh, there's a, a nice sheen to it. Okay, you want to kind of get um, go over it as uh, as evenly as possible. Okay, and then during the process, you don't want to touch it too much because as it's drying, and if you do rub over again, that's when again you'll kind of get those um, those areas of clumping. Okay. So as that dries, I'm going to switch over and do this side, okay? And that's basically how I just drywall tape and shoe glue my, my, um, my body. So I found this method to be really good, um, the easiest for me to do so far. Um, the mesh takes me a little bit longer. Um, I could have done mesh on this one uh, because the body is pretty much straightforward flat. Like it doesn't have too many intricate uh, uh, areas that are curved like that. The um, Proline body that I just done for the Grave Digger, that one has a lot of bumps and curves because it's basically a wide body custom F100 body. So that one took a little bit of time to drywall tape. And I think I used about um, two and a half tubes of um, shoe glue and I applied about three coats on that one so I just wanted to make sure that all those areas that had cracks in there and crevices I wanted to get in there really 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 well so so the areas that you want to make sure that you get your shoe glue is is always the fender area and thin parts that um, that will um, crack or bend Based on the reviews of other people when they bash theirs, you can see where if they haven't done any reinforcement, 
you can see where there is a crack. So that's the area that you want to pay attention. So again, for, for the grave digger, it's going to be the front nose or the hood and the rear section. Okay. So everyone's been complaining lately about the um, solid axles. And I don't know about you guys, but I know it's maybe a little bit unfair to judge so prematurely, you know, because Losi does make really well-made uh, vehicles. Uh, very reliable, I think, in my opinion. But um, a lot of people have been breaking axles, and especially the rear axle. And I, I kind of attribute it to, um, because it is winter time, so frigid um, temperatures will uh, make your rear axle a little bit more brittle, in my opinion. Now, where I live, I live in Hawaii, so temperatures are always in the 80s. It'll get as high as the 90s, maybe as low as the 70s during the day. I mean, in Kaniwai, on the east coast of Oahu, it might get into the high 50s and low 60s overnight, but we're talking early morning and during the winter time. So typically, the coldest will be like it'll be like 70 degrees in Hawaii, if anything. And we're talking mid 70s, so. I don't have to really worry too much about um, uh, my axles cracking unless I abuse my vehicle. And um, I do have JER braces on mine. I know a lot of people have the other braces, the uh, carbon fiber one. I think CCXRC um, did some testing with the carbon fiber bra uh, braces and he had um, nothing but good reviews on that. Um, he was doing a lot of backflips and trying to do moonwalks with his uh, with his grave digger. So he did some testing on that. The JER JER one. His testing wasn't as extensive, but um, he did find some flaws, but minor flaws, I think. So you know, I think the grave digger. It's not really the intent is not to make it like a a, a basher where you're jumping very 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 high ramps or um, you know skateboard uh, parks uh, kind of ramps and jumps uh, so if you don't abuse your truck like that or use your truck in that manner I think you'll get good use out of your grave digger without having to worry about those kind of things um, I do suggest however that you do go over your grave digger or your um, son of a grave digger uh, when you get yours new um, everyone's been checking your or everyone's been checking the or should check your kingpins uh, you should check your um, sway bars grub screws uh, those are the things that will come loose or could come loose because they don't come from the factory with any uh, blue loctite so I've seen already some videos who people have unboxed theirs and used theirs without doing that uh, of using blue Loctite and theirs have been coming loose and coming out so I already do that I do that with all my vehicles um, so even this one when I got mine out of the box um, I did a once over make sure that all the screws are tight and everything's there and I noticed that I was missing my uh, C-clip on the um, the pinion and I guess I don't know if, it, if you would call it a spur gear but the spur gear that's um, connected to the uh, pinion was missing the C-clip. So I noticed when I took off my cover, the pinion came out pretty easy. There's basically like a pin and it came out pretty easily. And when I posted on Facebook, you know, why did this come out easy? Is there something missing here? They said that's basically normally uh, normal. Uh, the, the, uh, the pin that holds the uh, pinion does come out but everyone was saying oh you're missing your um, c-clip so luckily I have you know automotive parts and a bunch of c-clips and just put a c-clip in there so now other people have been saying lately oh they found like loose screws in their diff they open up the axles and there was like a loose screw because they heard rattling and stuff like that now I haven't taken apart my 
my axles because there's no reason to but um, you never know you know um, everyone's human so people make mistakes and that could happen so I'm just saying it's more of the story is you should go over your RC's before running it and that'll help not only you know to prevent costly repairs but it'll help you with um, getting familiar with your your RC how to take it apart how to fix it you know um, what it looks like underneath underneath the uh, you know, covers and everything so at least you know how to fix it so. so I'm almost done with the front section so that's how quick it is you know basically I'm just using coats going over all the cracks all the areas as much as I can and putting layers here so I'm pretty much like uh, almost done I'm already two-thirds done again you want to use as much as many light coats as you can and um, I'm going kind of quick so you can be a little bit more um, methodical when you do yours but since I've already done the grave digger body I'm kind of used to the pace and the areas of the body where I know I should put the shoe goo so I'm going at a quicker pace but again you still want to use thin layers of shoe goo okay so but let me know if there's any uh, other things that you want to see on my channel um, I know I got to do a lot more bashing um, it's been raining here. I mean, wintertime in Hawaii is um, the rainy season. So we don't have snow unless you go to like um, the big island on the tall mountains of Mauna Kea. <laughs> there is snow up there. So snowboarders can go up there. Yeah, shockingly and surprisingly, yeah, there is snow in Hawaii. You just have to go to uh, the big island. But um, but yeah, wintertime in Hawaii is the rainy season. So especially where I live, which is in Kaneohe. Kaneohe is the winter side, so um, winter side is known for more rain than town. And the way that works is because we have the Ko'olau range. So imagine the, um, imagine the, uh, let's see here, the, the Ku'olau ranch has those mountains. The, there's wind that comes from the ocean that typically would blow any cloud or moisture over the islands but because we have that mountain it restricts the clouds from going over so any clouds or rain clouds gets trapped because of the mountains the mountain mountains basically act as a barrier so that's why we have um, a wetter climate than townside so if you compare it to something like uh, Waikiki or Ala Moana in, in terms of reference, um, that's why it's more wet and cooler on the Kaniwai side or the east side of the island. So that's why people like it on Kani in Kaniwai because it's a lot, you know, uh, a lot cooler. Very, very cool. Uh, as you know, the, the side of the island is more lush. So because of the rain, there is a lot more greenery. So this side of the island, you know, is a lot prettier and town side and of course because it's countryside okay. so little tip, little tip for you guys if you don't know and if you plan on visiting the islands windward side is very um, uh, scenic all your basically all your typical shows are, are filmed on this side because of the scenery Magnum PI and a lot of movies 51st States Jurassic Park it's because of the mountains we have on this side and the lushness of the greenery. Okay, I'm almost done. Just a few more passes, and this is just my uh, first coat. So I'll let this dry during the day, and then typically I'll do it again um, right before I go to bed, or before I go to sleep in the evening. And then the next day, maybe midday, I'll look at it, you know, once it's dry, 
and I'll see if there's any spots that I missed or if any other places that I want to build up in terms of uh, shoe gluing and I'll, I'll add like a third third layer but I don't think I've gone more than three layers I might touch up some spots but other than that I don't think I've gone more than three, three layers of shoe glue that I think I ever needed so far Okay, so just about done. Now with this black body on the inside, it's a lot easier to tell what areas I've missed because anything that's not uh, wet, I know hasn't been touched. So that helps. Something like a, with a white body on the inside is a little bit more, more difficult for me to tell if it's been, um, if I've used shoe glue on it or not. So, but with this black body, I can kind of tell. Okay, so just about done. Let me just kind of look over here. Some spots that I missed. Right around the window area where it gets, you know, a little bit more intricate. And around the fenders. So those are the areas that normally will crack would be, of course, the fenders, front bumper, rear bumper, rear section. Not much the roof or anything like that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I think I've covered everything. Let me just one more time get this part here. Okay, so that's about it. Okay, so let me just get a napkin here. Close up my. And this is what I mean by clumping. So, if you don't let it dry, and you touch it up again, this is the clumping that you get. So, if you look at my glove, there. If you look at my glove, that's the clumping that you'll see on your body. If you put too many thick coats on, you get into this kind of problem. So try to you know do a lot of thin coats, and you avoid that kind of uh, issue. Okay, so I'm going to take off my gloves. And I have a lot of latex gloves. You can do it without it, but I just find it a lot cleaner if I use latex gloves. I know it's hard to come by right now during the, the pandemic, but um, find it if you can find it. I get mine at some place like Napa or Riley's or automotive shops. But here's the body. This is what it looks like. So it's, it's a lot wetter right now. So it looks kind of gooey and clumpy. As compared to how it was before with just the sh with the uh, hot glue but as this dries um, everything will harden so it'll start looking solid again okay so basically I'll just leave it upside down and um, in my house uh, I have a well ventilated area and I'll keep it near, near a window and let this dry and then um, I'll just test flexibility and everything so um, as you can see this is pretty flimsy right now but as this hardens and with more coats, it'll get thicker where it won't bend. So that's the only area that I'm worried about is this this, this front area here. Um, the grill that goes over this, the stock grill helps with the rigidity of the front end as compared to the, um, the grave digger. The grave digger does not have this. So that's why the front end of the grave digger is super flimsy. But this one is a little bit more rigid. And as you know from my other video, I did order the um, front bumpers from China which I'll probably get in, in a few few weeks or sometime in February. Okay, so that's it guys. That's just how I um, reinforce my body. Shoe goo, uh, Tesla tape, and you can use whatever materials you want to use. Just use whatever, you, you know, is more cost, most cost effective for you. Again, my shoe goo is only like under $6. Trial tape is super cheap. I think you can get it for three to five bucks. And they come in multiple rows, so I, I, I haven't even done my first row and I did several bodies already. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Um, the next time you see a video, hopefully you can go bashing with the Grave Digger and the Losi, um, um, well, the Losi Grave Digger and the Son of a Gun and we'll do another bit video of that, of bashing. Alright guys, so hope you like this video, like and subscribe. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. 
and then we'll do another video soon. All right, take it easy.